our first example for a difference between two means. The Wade Track Reserve in Georgia is an old growth forest of longleaf pines that has survived in a relatively undisturbed state for hundreds of years. One question of interest to foresters who study the area is, how do the sizes of longleaf pine trees in the northern and southern halves of the forest compare? Find out, researchers took a random sample of 30 trees from each half of the, and measured the diameter at breast height in centimeters. Here are comparative box plots of the data and the summary statistics from Minitab. So we want to construct and interpret a 90% common symbol for the difference in mean DBH of long leaf pines in the northern and southern hemispheres of the Wade Track Preserve. Okay, so we've got two populations. We've got the population in the north, we've got a population in the south, and the parameter of interest is the mean uh, DBH, so diameter at breast height in centimeters. Fortunately, they've given us the summary statistics and two box plots. So before we can, um, before we even state, start making this interval, it's important just to take a look and make comparisons between the box plots. So if we were to describe the shape of these box plots, looks like the north is skewed to the right, looks like the south is skewed to the left, uh, comparing their centers, the south, it looks like, tends to be higher based on this sample. Um, as the median is higher and the IQR is shifted higher. Um, and then comparing variation, there's more variation in it looks like the north because the range is longer as well as the IQR is wider. And if you compare their standard deviations, you can see the north has a larger standard deviation. So that's just helpful to do before you take a look at um, creating your confidence interval and a good reminder on how to compare distributions. So first, we're going to state what we're trying to capture with our confidence interval. All we want to find out is we want to estimate the mean difference between the south and the north with 90% confidence, where the mean of the south represents the mean um, DBH of all trees in the southern half of the forest and the mu of n represents DBH of all northern, uh, the northern half of the forest. Next, we're going to plan where we'll state what we're going to use and we're going to check the conditions to make sure we can proceed with this two sample t interval. First, we state that it's a two sample t interval that we're using. And it's a t interval because we're looking to compare two population means. Um, we check the random condition, and both samples they said were random samples. They're randomly selected, and they're independent, so they don't influence each other. Next, we'll check the 10% condition and the large normal condition. For 10%, I'd say it's safe to assume that 30 is less than 10% of all the trees in the north, and 30 is also less than 10% of all the trees in the south. Um, it's, or you could say it's safe to assume there's more than 300 trees in both the north and the south. And then the large normal condition is simple because our sample sizes are both uh, at least 30, which means the sampling distributions will be approximately normal. So you can see all three conditions are met, which means the sampling distributions are approximately normal, which means the difference between the two will also be approximately normal. Now, don't make the mistake and accidentally try and check large counts or call this large counts here because large counts is for proportions and we're working with means right now. So up here, we're gonna do the actual interval. And before I, before I do anything with the interval, I like to list out any information that I have from my sample. So here, it's not totally necessary for this one because They've given it to us up here and it's essentially the same thing, but generally I like to write it out. So I have it right there. And then I'll write the formula for the confidence interval and I can just plug in all the things that I have. The formula for the interval is gonna be the difference between the two sample means plus or minus the critical value because it's a T interval. And then the standard deviation divided by this, the sample size. Well, the standard deviation squared divided by the sample size for both the North and the South samples. So I'll just plug in this information that I have here. And to find my critical value, I'm gonna to have to use my degrees of freedom of 29. 
because my sample sizes are both 30. So 30 minus one gives us 29. So my point estimate is just gonna be subtracting the sample means and I, I chose the South first. To find my critical value, I have to remember I'm using 90% confidence. So I've gotta do inverse T with 29 degrees freedom to get my critical value here. My critical value is gonna be 1.699 because my area is 0 0.05 with degrees of freedom 29. And this is just a picture to remind you where that 0 0.05 came from. You're finding a negative critical value and a positive critical value for the central 90% of all T values. So I'll plug in 1.69 and then I'll plug in the standard deviations to figure out what the confidence interval is. So after we've plugged in our critical value and our standard error, we'll get a difference, a mean difference, a point estimate of 10.83 plus or minus the margin of error ended up being seven. And so we'll add those together and we'll get our interval from 3.83 to 17.83. And so we're 90% confident that the difference between the, the mean difference from the south and the north diameters is between 3.83 and 17.83. And so that will be um, how we interpret our conclusion here. Again, we're 90% confident the interval from 3.83 centimeters to 17.83 centimeters captures the true difference in the DBH of the southern and northern trees. And that is the population of the southern and the northern trees. So all of them in the population, the means. So one thing to make a note about, about this interval is that all the values are positive and zero does not fall in the interval. So this has given us some reason to believe that the trees in the south are bigger than the trees in the, in the north because the south, if, if we result in all positive values here, that means um, we have reason to believe that the first value is larger. If they were all negative, then that would give us some reason to believe that the trees in the north were larger because that would mean the second value is larger. If they were negative and positive, then we wouldn't have reason to believe that any are, any are bigger because all the values in the interval are plausible values for the difference. Now that we've completed the interval, I wanna show you how to do this confidence interval on your calculator in a fourth of the time. So let's open up the calculator. We'll go to stat and to our tests, and then we'll find the two sample T interval. So two sample T interval there. Remember the two sample Z interval is only when you know the population standard deviations, which is very rare. And we don't know the standard deviations of the, all the trees in the North and the South. So that's why it's a two sample T interval. And if they've given us data, they haven't given us data in this problem, uh, they gave us the summary statistics, so that's why we'll select statistics. If they did give you the actual samples, then you'll have to put them in list one and list two, but they haven't done that for us here. So you can see I've already typed in the mean from the uh, south was 34.53. So I'm saying my first sample is the south, and the standard deviation was 14.26. The sample size was 30. Then my second sample, the sample from the north, had a mean of 23.7 and a standard deviation of 17.5. So just type this data in. And I wanted to have 90% confidence. Let's change that to 90. And then pooled. Um, I'll talk more about this later in the video, but I'm going to select no for pooled. Now I can calculate my interval. And you can see that it's a little bit different than what I got in my calculator and the reason or on, on paper. And the reason that is different because mine was 3.8 to 17.8. The reason it's different is because the degrees of freedom, 55.72. If you're using your calculator, the calculator generates the actual degrees of freedom. What I've taught you is the conservative method. And the conservative method is pick the smaller sample and then subtract one. And that's perfect and that works. But if you're doing it on your calculator, this is actually more accurate and is the best way to create your two sample C interval. So 
for moving forward, instead of um, doing your degrees of freedom is n minus one, what you can do is type in your calculator and it will give you this degrees of freedom and you can copy this into the do section on your notes. Or you can copy this into the do section on any problem that you're doing. Again, I recommend using your calculator and then when you, when you find the interval on your calculator, write your interval down and um, just make sure you copy down the correct degrees of freedom based on what your calculator said.